Now I don't grab all the witness shoes because I don't feel like it's necessary, but I do grab them when they intrigue the hell out of me. And this is one of those shoes, especially look at this box. It's got its own box. This is cool for a hundred bucks. I'm listening. Yo, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got something that I feel is kind of special. Uh, it's these guys right here. Potential bad boys? Maybe. Uh, this is the LeBron Witness 6, which I think is a great looking shoe. So the LeBron Witness line is kind of the takedown or budget friendly option for the LeBron Signature Series. So we have the main flagship, which we're coming up on the LeBron 19, which I heard are like 200 bucks. Yeah. But there's a lot of air in those. That's looks insane. I really hope that they play well, but fingers crossed. However, the budget options typically work with less of a budget themselves. Like the design team and stuff has much less money to work with for something like this. So they make every cent count, which usually means that these are better shoes, in my opinion, because they really work hard to make sure you get the most bang for their buck, which means that you get the most bang for your buck. Excellent. Anyways, look at that outsole, man. Isn't that pretty? And this looks like it's outdoor friendly too. These grooves are thickish. This looks like a 90s shoe. And I really do like this, man. This is super dope. You even got a flex groove in there. Like this reminds me of the soldier. Where are those anyways? Did that line get canceled? What the f happened to that? The soldier line was my favorite of the LeBron signature stuff, especially the soldier three. Those are amazing. Now, as far as the tech is concerned, we basically have Phylon along the midsole. Some of it's covered in plastic and stuff, but for the most part, it is Phylon. And then there is that air sole unit, which is really cool for a couple of reasons. The first reason is its visual aesthetics, which I know that doesn't really matter for performance. I understand that. But from someone like me, where I grew up in the 90s, and this is kind of what air units used to look like. There's that line back again. I don't know if that thing is there for functional purposes or if it's just there for aesthetics, because that's the way that it used to be manufactured, which is much different than today so i don't know if they just put that line on there to please old people like me or if they put it on there because that's exactly how they're making these bags again all i know is that the line is back i would love to see it on retros like the pippins the total max up tempos other up tempo models the air max units you know what i mean like the full lengths like the 97s and the 98s it would be great now these guys are being reported as having a full length air unit and if you just look at them from the side profile you would agree with that but it's actually not a full length unit you can actually see the style of unit that it is right there through the bottom. So this guy is this shape. It's what they call a dog bone unit. It's very similar to what they use in the LeBron 9s. It's not as thick or uh, as max volume as the LeBron 9s. This is a much thinner unit, very similar to what we would get in the 90s, even though those were a lot thicker too, but not quite LeBron 9 thick. So uh, underneath the ball of the foot and the toe area, this is all foam right here. So where you see this flex groove kind of pull through, that's the split between foam and air. So it's not full length air, but it's pretty close. And I think that it's great for hundred bucks like this is a lot more cushion than we ever got as a youngster for your money you know what I mean like we used to get like the flight models and stuff like that those would be usually about 90 bucks or less and uh, they had none of this stuff they might have had an air unit in the heel and that's it and you couldn't even see it it was encapsulated one of the cool design features that I actually really love is this shark fin thing right here on the side it's on both sides of the shoe that's a stability piece right there so it's to keep you locked into the heel make sure that it doesn't roll over the footbed that my friends is what true ankle support actually is even though ankle support in and of itself as a term is a myth what? your ankle is the support take off your shoes what happens I fall to the ground do you you just <laughs> collapse you, you know what I mean like what are them toys where you push the button you know it's got the string through it mm -hmm. and you push the button the character just drops and sh that doesn't happen when you take your shoes off. You know why? Because your ankle is the body support feature. That thing keeps you mobile. No matter what you're doing, you could run barefoot in your good, right? Right. When you introduce a foreign object to the foot like this, that's when instability becomes a problem. So you have to make sure that you become as stable as possible with this foreign object. And with that, you want a wider base, which these actually don't have. I wish that they did, but they don't. And then support features like a heel counter, or in this case, this giant shark fin. There is a heel counter back there too, by the way, it's very rigid. So this heel support area right there, it, it, it feels like it's gonna be great. Where they lack in the outrigger though, that's where this little lip is. That's supposed to keep you on the footbed when you're shifting. Hopefully that works. Now the upper is uh, where they saved a lot of money on these guys. Uh, it's very interesting because we got textile pretty much in the back. It's a typical mesh build. The forefoot and the midfoot area though is very similar to what we've seen on the Under Armour Windflow Velocity or something like that, right? It's their warp upper, which was basically made up 
setup of see-through screen mesh and nylon cables. So we don't have the see-through screen mesh, we just have an open mesh underneath these nylon cable bands, but all the stripes that you see are actual nylon. Got this cool picture right here of uh, like a close-up of it, so that way you can actually see it, because sometimes my camera just can't pick it up, or I don't know how to use my camera good enough to make it look great. But look at this picture, it's fantastic. Also, look at that colorway. God damn, those are sexy. But that's the main build is we've got textiles along with this uh, you know, nylon strip and everything, and the nylon's supposed to be the strength layer, so when you're moving and shifting and all of that stuff, that's supposed to keep you on the footbed as well. Another small feature that I think might go unnoticed, but I think is really cool, is actually right there, a little purple guy. We've got a nylon cable that's gonna go down in a V form. It's fairly independent, should go all the way down to the footbed, so that's going to keep you strapped on and tight onto the footbed as well. Uh, we've got one on each side and it's right in that kind of like high stress zone area. So your forefoot, especially if you're a real shifty player, you're going to put a lot of weight and torque on those sections of the shoe and that right there could save you. They did sneak the lion in. I don't, I don't like this thing. <laughs> I really don't. But the tongue feels mad comfortable compared to other models of the past, like, you know, the last one, the 18s with that cheap ass thin tongue with the air bubbles on it. Too much gimmick, not enough performance. This right here is all performance. Everything with the, you know, the king of the jungle. Now, as far as sizing is concerned they do fit true to size they are slightly snug but i think that's a good thing given that the upper is textile so i would stick with your true size if you were interested in these again they're about a hundred bucks which i think is a great price they've got great colorways already i'm excited to see what else is coming and again i just wish that stuff like this was available when we were young well, to take it back to the colorways i haven't seen any of them i haven't looked at any and i know lebron has nothing to do with hockey but if they don't do one where this shark fin is oh, gray, and then this piece back here is like an ocean color, and then we put teal with some black, and then everybody walks around doing this. I'm gonna be very disappointed. If you're not from San Jose, <laughs> you don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> but uh, they could possibly do something like that because they've done swingman colorways, which mm -hmm. is like teals and reds uh, for Ken Griffey. Yeah, but he's Mariners. not hockey either. I'm just saying, that's the way you get your color in there. So you can think whatever you want. Yeah. It's like when you see those orange fives and you're like, oh, it's the Giants. And I'm like, sure. Whatever. I do want to show you this colorway though, because they are pretty. Aren't those clean? Oh, it has the gray shark fin. So yeah, no, it's it's clean. We can. It's hella clean. I love those. Those are dope. They weren't available. All they had was this colorway, uh, which I also really like. I don't know who designed these or anything like that. I don't know anybody on the design team. I just think that they did a great job with what they had to work with. And hats off to you guys. I think that you guys did a great job with these. Again, the colorways are killing. Like them, they're pretty. Them gray ones. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, make that sharks one a possibility. The, the colorways are done. <laughs> Okay, these are all done. Make it a reality, I mean. No. But with that being said, you guys let us know what you think about these down below in the comment section. Thanks for all the support, and until next time, guys, have a good one.